the, the next uh, lecture will be uh, given by uh, Dr. Shiran Shapira, and it's an, on exosomes displaying CD24 in COVID-19 from idea to patient's cure. Please. Okay, so first of all, I want to thank Professor Benar Yael for the invitation and for the opportunity to present our data. And in this presentation, I will try to share some information we have gathered in the journey we have been doing over the past two years with an effort to develop a new technology that can hopefully help in the war against COVID-19. But in fact, COVID-19 is just a proof of concept. And since we believe in thinking outside of the box, we actually develop a platform that has the potential to treat many other respiratory diseases with high risk of cytokine storm development, such as COPD, pulmonary thrombosis, pulmonary sepsis, and various interstitial lung diseases. Now, after Galia's presentation, I don't need to elaborate on this global health crisis of our time. COVID-19 is a highly transmissible disease in the community with very highly heterogeneous effect in patients, ranging from asymptomatic infection to severe multi-organ damage. Now, the hyperinflammation stage of COVID-19 induced disease is therapeutic challenge because the antiviral drugs do not address immune pathology. The anti-inflammatory drugs may interfere with antiviral immunity. Pfizer and uh, uh, Merck pills, for example, can only be used at the early infec infection stage. However, 95% of COVID-19 patients in this, in this stage do not need any therapy. Another example is the steroids. Administration of steroids in the early infection stage could increase viral replication and even perhaps delay the development of adaptive immunity. At a later stage, higher doses of steroids will be required, which may lead to greater side effects. So in contrast to these anti-inflammatory and antiviral drugs, having short intervention window and quite a few side effects, ExoCD24, which acts here, is a biological immunomodulator and it leads to inhibition of tissue injury driving inflammation without interfering with pathogen-induced immune activation. Therefore, LC24, which was designed to affect the cytokine storm, is of particular interest as a therapeutic agent for hyperinflammation and ARDS. Now, the term cytokine storm that, I certainly, that you're certainly familiar with actually describes an immune system that's gone awry, an inflammatory response that's flaring out of control. This cytokine storm is the most severe complication of COVID-19, leading to acute respiratory distress syndrome, deterioration of the patients, the need for ventilation, and in many cases, unfortunately, even to death. So what is the uniqueness or the novelty of our approach? Now, it is very important to understand what I said before, that 95% of COVID-19 patients, and even more with the Omicron variant, do not need any therapy but to symptomatic care we were able to produce a completely novel drug that based on C24 and rich exosomes that are delivered directly to the lungs, where the main damage occurs, in order to suppress the cytokine storm and help to those 5% who really need therapy. Now, we don't fight the virus, but the most severe complication caused by it, the cytokine storm. So we actually developed a platform that had the potential to be effective for many other indications with unmet need. Now, EGOC24 can be, can be produced effectively, efficiently, rapidly, in relatively low cost. We can use low concentration because of its local administration. But I think that the most important thing that so far with more than 150 patients, no adverse events that are related to the drug. Now, the technology actually based on two major components on CD24 and exosomes. CD24 is a small, heavily glycosylated GPI anchor protein that we are working on for the last 25 years. It is a tiny molecule that raises attention and awareness in many biological fields. Among other things, it functions as a cell adhesion molecule, an immune checkpoint, or a biological immunomodulator. So in our approach, C24 is the warhead, and the guiding entity is the exosomes. The exosomes are promising and relatively new therapeutic area in cellular therapy. They are nano-sized lipid vesicles secreted by most cell types, a normal and disease, and they can tr tr transmit information to other cells via delivery of biologically active cargo. Now, many reasons lead the exosomes to be a the ideal natural delivery tool, but because we're short in time, I will not elaborate on it. But our strategy was to combine between the power of CD24 and the power of exosomes. Both of them have been uh, studied in many clinical trials for many indications. COVID-19 is also one of them. But what is the mechanism of action? 
So today it is well known and accepted that the innate immune system can recognize and bind both DAMs, the danger associated molecular patterns that are secreted from damaged or dying cells, and the PUMPs, the pathogen associated molecular pattern. Less clear are whether and how the host response to those DAMs and PUMPs are differentially regulated. Now, about a decade ago, it was demonstrated that C24 allows this immune discrimination between DAMs and PUMPs. It selectively binds to host response to DAMs, but not to PUMP. And actually, this important role of C24 is the basis of our suggested mechanism. So pattern recognition receptors, such as the TOL or tol -like receptor, bind both DAMs and PUMPs and trigger the inflammatory response. However, the binding of C24 to those DAMs actually prevent them from binding to the tol -like receptor and therefore inhibit the activation on NF-kappa B, which is a key signaling pathway in the secretion of cytokines and chemokines. Now, another distinct class of pattern recognition receptor are the Siglex family, which regulate immune cells functions. Now, the Siglex can recognize and bind sialic acid-containing structures. C24 has a sialic acid that is located on its uh, terminal region. So Siglex 10, a member of the Siglex family, binds firmly to C24 in a cellulation-dependent manner. Now, this recognition results in the uh, tyrosine phosphorylation of the cytosolic iodine domain by kinase from the SARC family, thereby recruiting the SHP1 tyrosine phosphatase. And as a result, the pattern recognition receptor mediated inflammation is blocked by selectively dephosphorylating different components of the NF-kappa B pathway. So downmodulation of the systemic inflammation is achieved. And I will conclude by saying that exoc 24 attenuates the activity on NF-kappa B and therefore the activation of the immune system by at least two mechanisms. But I want to emphasize and say again that unlike steroids, for example, that do not discriminate between dams and pumps and therefore shut down the entire immune system, exoc 24 while it inhibits the dams initiated immune activation, it, it does not interfere to the pump's immune recognition. Therefore, allowing the activation of the, immune, of the innate immunity, which is the normal and protective host response to the virus, and therefore does not interfere with the body's ability to fight and eliminate the virus. Now, a little bit about the preclinical data, but before that, I just want to say that thanks to hard teamwork and strive for a goal, the development pathway was unprecedented. It took less than six months from the moment the idea was conceived and the, the, the technology was invented through a many preclinical studies, in vivo, uh, um, in vitro, safety, efficacy, then an intensive GMP training and drug manufacturing, until first in human in phase one clinical trial, or one year until the completion of phase two, and now the ultimate study is ongoing. So EGOC24 is actually based on the incorporation of C24 on the surface of exosomes, through genetic manipulation of cells to encode this uh, GPI anchor protein that is localized to the exosomal membrane. A stable clone was developed and characterized as part of its characterization, next generation sequence analysis was performed in order to provide a, 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 a more assurance of its clonality. High expression of C24 and other exosomal biomarkers were detected on exosomes that were purified from this clone, as can be demonstrated, for example, by exosome-based ELISA, flow cytometry, and Western blot analysis. Now, we, we focus on determining the properties of our exosomal product through a variety of tests that include cryotransmission electron microscopy for morphological characterization, concentration and sign distribution evaluation using the nanoparticle tracking analyzer, and quantification of C24 molecules that exist per one exosome. Then, the biological activity of exoc 24 was also tested in vitro in a study of cytokine secretion from hum human monocytes that were differentiated into macrophages. So for, first, cell, uh, differences in cell morphology were used to assess the differentiation caused by PMA. Then the human recombinant NHGB1, a representative dump, was added to trigger the inflammatory response, and the exosomes were then added as well. Supernatant was collected at different time points during the study and tested by using the multiplex array. The results show that EGOC24 significantly reduced the expression of the secreted cytokine and chemokine, among them IL-6, IL-1-beta, MCP1, and more, which are all known as, as an NF-kappa B target genes. Now, a closer look at this slide actually raises the possibility 
of demonstrating the specificity of the treatment. To this end, monoclonal antibodies against CD24 were added in order to inhibit or block the activity of the drug. And indeed, ECO CD24 was blocked in part following treatment with these antibodies. Then we moved forward and we tested the efficacy of the drug in vivo in a mouse model of LPS-induced ARDS, which is a well-accepted model for human acute respiratory disease caused by the SARS-CoV-2. For that purpose, exosomes presenting HSA, the C24 murine homologue, were developed, produced, fully characterized. Again, high expression levels of the murine antigen as well as of exosomal biomarkers were demonstrated. So, intraocular installation of LPS was conducted in bulb C mice. Treatment was started three hours after the administration of LPS, and daily inhalation of aerosolized exosomes were carried out. Now, by means of survival, one mouse from the control group died from the severity of the LPS-induced disease, while no deaths were recorded among mice that were treated with the exosomes. In addition, cytokine and chemokines were simultaneously analyzed using the Luminex technology, and histopathology evaluation was carried out as well. Now, taking all together, the results show that ECOC24 attenuates the severity of lung injury and significantly inhibits the secretion of systemic and local pro-inflammatory cytokines and chemokines. Then a similar study was conducted in order to compare our suggested therapy to the standard of care uh, accepted for COVID-19, dexamethasone. Now, the results of the study show that the efficacy of both drugs is similar. However, looking into the immune cell distribution in the bronchial alveolar lavage fluid actually, actually proved our hypothesis that unlike steroids, and dexamethasone is an example, that dramatically reduced the inflammatory system or the immune system ExoCD24 reverts the immune system back to normal activity, in this case like in naive mice, and actually allows the body to deal with the virus and clear it out. By terms of uh, the cytokine profile, ExoCD24, like dexamethasone, significantly reduced the levels of the secreted pro-inflammatory cytokines and chemokines. Then, five days repeated inhalation dose toxicity study was carried out with a design that is, was very similar to what was intended to be used in humans. Two doses, mid and high, were used in the main study group as well as in the seven days recovery group. And I will not get into details, I just say that no safety concerns were raised among, uh, during the entire study. The pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic parameters are currently being evaluated as well. But from our preliminary data, we saw that after one um, dose of inhalation, exoc 24 can be detected in quite a typical pattern in the bronchial alveolar lavage fluid, but also in the bloodstream without accumulating in other organs. Drug device combination, nebulizers, space design, lung uh, scattering analysis are being performed as well. For that purpose, a real scale 3D model of patients, CT uh, derived airways was applied. This method that was previously used for in vitro studies of aerosols is adapted for the evaluation of ecstasy 24 delivery to the lungs by inhalation. And I will briefly summarize some of the clinical data. So open label phase 1b 2a clinical trial was initiated on September 2020 with the aim of evaluating the safety of ecstasy 24 in COVID-19 patients with moderate to severe disease. The trial was conducted at Tel Aviv Soaski Medical Center. Professor Nadir Arba was the principal investigator. The trial included four dose escalating groups, total of 35 patients. Each patient received one, uh, one dose of inhalation five to seven days every day for five days and follow-up assessment on day seven and 35. More than 3,000 patients were assessed for eligibility. Only 131 were eligible and 35 were enrolled. The average age of participants was 56. Third of them were female. Now, the most important finding of this study is that no severe adverse events and even adverse events that are correlated to the drug were reported. Now, even though the primary goal of the study was safety, and safety is above all, we were very encouraged and happy from the promising clinical and laboratory efficacy. The blood oxygen saturation of the patients was increased. The respiratory rate decreased. In addition, the lymphocyte, lymphocyte count was increased and uh, initial response was demonstrated by chest X-ray. 
The seroinflammatory indices of the patients, such as CRP, ferritin, LDH, dimer, were significantly reduced, and blood samples were taken from all patients at different time points during the study and tested by multiplex ELISA-based array. Now, the results show that EGOC24 significantly reduced the levels of the systemic pro-inflammatory indices in a time-dependent manner. In addition, monitoring of IL-6, COVID-19-associated systemic inflammatory cytokine, was conducted from day 1 to 35, and again showed significant reduction in, in this cytokine uh, among all the four patients' group. Now, in phase 1, we cannot compare to placebo. However, historical control group of patients matched by age and sex was compared to the intervention group. Their demographic and clinical characteristics are listed in this table. But the, compar the comparison actually show that the duration of hospitalization, admissions to ICU, mechanical ventilation, and mortality rate were significantly shorter in the intervention group. So these results certainly gave us the green light to go ahead to phase two. So phase 2B randomized single-blind dose study was conducted at three medical centers in Athens. Professor Sotirius, who is the Greek Tsar, who is responsible for the Greece's management of the coronavirus SARS-CoV-2 crisis, was the principal investigator. 90 patients received the drug, either 9 to the 10 to the 9 or 10 to the 10 exosome particles, every day for five days and follow-up assessment on day 7 and 28. Now, there were no differences in comorbidities and demographic characteristics between the two tested groups, no safety signals, no adverse events, and severe adverse effects that are related to the drug. Now, about the efficacy, it was very nice to see the promising and effective uh, 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 drug, very similar to what we saw in the first phase. However, we didn't saw any significant uh, statistical differences between the two dose groups except for a trend in favor to the higher dose for ferritin and CRP. Looking at the inflammatory picture, EGOC24 showed very promising efficacy. And upon the completion of phase two, we move forward to the ultimate phase. So randomized phase 2B international multicenter quadriblind study, EGOC24 versus placebo, two to one ratio, total of 156 patients was launched so far, 16 patients were recruited. In addition, ECOSA 24 was also offered as a compassionate use for the treatment of patients that are hospitalized with very high severity of COVID-19 and did not meet the criteria of the protocol. So seven patients received the treatment under compassionate use with very promising results. Now, we assume that COVID-19 is here and it will stay, but I just want to say again, that we don't expect that the efficacy of the drug will be um, changed according to the viral mutations or variant because we don't fight the virus, we don't target the virus, but the most severe complication. Therefore, COVID-19 is just a proof of con con uh, concept for other uh, indications. But actually, by creating this platform, we are providing a treatment for many other respiratory as, a, as well as systemic diseases with unmet need. And in the last three slides, I will show you very briefly some of the preclinical data. And the first one is for cecum ligation and puncture uh, induced septic, sepsis model. Uh, two experiments were conducted so far with, with very promising results. The control group had statistically significantly higher mortality compared with the group that were treated with the exosomes in a dose-dependent manner. Another model is bleomycin induced pulmonary fibrosis Three treatment regimens were tested, and I will not elaborate on it. However, results from flow cytometry on cell distribution in the bronchial alveolar lavage fluid, as well as the cytokine profile represented by cytokine array, show that the three treatment options were very similar in their efficacy and with a very clear trend compared to the control group. And the last model is of albumin based. Uh, induced allergic asthma, and actually it was very interesting to see that EGOC24 attenuates the severity of non-esonophilic disease. But I will stop here, and I just want to thank first and foremost to Professor Auber, my mentor, my partner, an obesity company that uh, are standing behind us and let us the opportunity to do it, all of our team in the laboratory, and all of, of course, our uh, consultants, and 
Thank you for listening.